Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Arturo from ANG and welcome to the second video of us explaining la guitarra. And this time I will show you guys the drop of the track, which is probably what you want to see the most. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. So, the first thing that I will explain are the leads, and I will explain them in this little breakdown that we have right after the melody um, of the, the actual break. So we have a impact, kind of lets you know that, oh shit, something else is coming. and. We keep some Atmos in there. As you can hear. And we start with the claps. It's actually the same claps that I showed you on the second break on the last video. But they start fading in with the filter. And after that, the we have, yeah, that's pretty much it for that part. And then the leads come in, which I'll explain in a second, because I want to explain this first. Uh, there are some horns. And this one. And then this one. And again, guys, sorry for the lag. There's not much I can do as of now, but I promise I'll work on something or I'll get better equipment for the next videos. Uh, then this crunchy bass that just stays on the note. And why is that? Because I want it to be really... Uh, I don't want much focus on other melodies, but the actual melody of the leads, which is this. So we have five different layers for the leads. Uh, the first one is a spire one. The second one is this one. And then the third one, which is the main one. Uh, to process this one, I use Camel Crusher, then this plugin, which is free. I highly recommend this one. Uh, it's a stereo uh, widener. Um, so yeah, it just used 128%. Oh, and C4 stereo. Guys, this is amazing. It's a multiband compressor. And it just controls all the dynamics of your sounds. But it's amazing. I use it in a lot of stuff, mainly sounds that are like really have frequencies that are very annoying and you don't want to cut them like, you know, bring each frequency down. So you use this and what it does, it look, look, look how it works. And without it, it would sound like this. You see, it sounds very compressed, but it sounds controlled. It's very controlled. Uh, then this sound, it's like square wave. Pretty much the same processing as the other ones. And then I have a sample from Virtual Riot. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually a sample and then just some Camel Crusher, Reverb EQ, and I opened it with the stereo imager.
And also, we'll show you guys this very nice, uh, same thing with the pitch. That's kind of how it... It's just very simple. Uh, you have to set the pitch to 24. A lot of people you uh, do it a different way, but it just works like that. And as you can see, it's a lower octave. So it's kind of like you're going from really low to your actual note. Um, so you create a cool effect with that. And then for, what's this? Oh, we added some strings as well with the melody. Well, that's not string. Yeah, it's a vo it's like a vocal from Excel. What's this? Oh my god, I don't know what that's even in there. Wow. <laughs> but anyway, um yeah, these are this is just a, a bass. And here we change the bass line to keep it more interesting, you know, to like introduce a little bit of, of a darker melody kind of thing. Uh, and it goes well with the leads, so it sounds like this. Uh, yeah, and right before the build up, this comes in. together with this, which is like a hey, kind of like that, <laughs> that I made a couple of years ago. And together with the kick, which is right here, which is also pitched to the same notes. Sorry, where's the yeah, sub bass? Yeah, and some chords. And some extra chords there. Yeah, some crashes and some simple fills. I'm just trying to find the base of the kick, but I don't think we have one there because, yeah, it comes after that, yeah. So it sounds like this. Oh wait, actually those crashes are not in there. Are they not? They're yeah. They're super loud. Sounds like this. And for the build up, uh, well, actually before that, we changed the melody a little bit here. Um, it's just to you know let the listener know that there's something else coming. Uh, for the build-up, we use the Take Me Away build-up lead, which we use in a lot of our tracks. Same thing with the pitch bend right here. Uh, also, this is something that we do a lot. You see, like, the last note that it ends up with, you keep it going and you pitch it up with the pitch pin on the build-up. So it sounds like this. Well, this one's actually pitched down. Uh, yeah, that's for the synths. 
and then we start introducing the melody, but I'll show you in a sec. Then this sound comes in again, uh, which is like the uh, sound that I showed you guys on the break project. After this sound, Uh, I'll go into the percussion of the buildup. Which, I have this loop from Kashmir. Then a snare. And I'm actually automating the reverb and the filter. So it, it builds more tension uh, throughout the buildup. Then this trap snare. Uh, and this reverse reverb as well. And then once again here. Hmm. Yeah, and I also start introducing the melody of the drop right here, which is like key, because um, that way you kind of expect something, but you don't give it all away. So what I did was this. I um, You filter it in, so you take all the highs out. Uh, until like 1k and but you, there's a lot of ways of doing this just for this track And it's kind of like an introduction for the And then the fill Comes in which is right here Which is just this the reverse reverb that I showed you, this little clap. And this snare. Uh, yeah, so the drop, I'll show you guys the kick first. The kick is just this cashmere kick. Um, uh, I took out the 25 hertz of the low end. That's like just unnecessary mud that you don't want. Then this, this is Maurice West. Yeah, actually from the cash rate pack. Yeah. Uh, the yin yang kick. And I grabbed a very aggressive um, and like a drastic a sidechain then this with distortion this little distortion plugin uh this is a guitar actually and a heart style layer yeah that sounded like that like that but then we added the capitator, which is a like very nice distortion plugin with a P style and four on on drive. And the filter freak, you can see what it's doing right here. It makes it more warm. Um, than it already is, then drop stuff. Yeah, so we have a brass going on here for the impact. Then what's this? Another brass. Then a one shot, Nikki Romero one shot.
White noise, very important. Just like very short. Uh, and the leads, you can actually see we have the same setting of sidechain for everyone. Uh, this is the setting that we have for sidechain. And here on the actual bus of the whole leads, uh, I'll show you a little bit of the processing that we did there. We have also automated down this um, right here. So dynamics are really important throughout the track. You're not gonna be, you're not gonna have like your leads be on the same uh, volume on the same track because dynamics change. Uh, whether it's the the break or the or if some vocals come in, so you have to control that manually. It's not magically gonna do uh, that itself. So. Yeah, so what we have is this plugin is amazing uh, because it was lacking a little bit of that warmth in the in the mid low in the, like around 300. So this boosts and kind of like creates a lot of that. I'll show you with with uh, with and without. very subtle but it's it works really well it gives a lot of body to the to the leads then we have eq well this is a reverb but we're not actually using yeah we're just automating in certain parts yeah that's very very subtle stuff um yeah this is just only for yeah, the dry wet. Yeah, it creates kind of like a stuttery sound as well. Uh. But then we have a pro cue just dipping a couple of frequencies that we didn't like. C4 as well. Just boosting everything. That's what the volume shaper is for. Uh, yeah, right here. The, like, that stuttery sound. So we just turn on the, the mix there. And we have it set on this um, this wave and on 132 uh, notes. Then let's see what else we have. We introduce some percussion here. And then this. It's just like EQ, Camel Crusher, Decapitator. Uh, and we took out a lot of the frequencies because the lows were like very bad. You might not be able to hear it very properly, but always try to, if it's not a bass or if you don't really need like the lows, low, low lows, take them out. They're not, because everything adds up in the mix. Uh, yeah, and we added, what else was cool about this? Ah, yeah, this loop after for the second drop part. But I'll show you guys the fills first. Uh, so what we did for the fills is just like basically grab some stuff from the break. Which I'll show you guys here because the lag is real now. Which is just the same synth, same everything as the break, uh, just doing a different melody. Let's hear the drop and see what else. Yeah, FX. FX is very important, guys. Uh, FX is like key for you to um, have energy on a drop. Crowd. Crash. 
white noise and these kind of glitches um then yeah some but let me play you the drop without the without the fx It kind of, it gives a lot of, uh, it keeps the drop, like, very ener high energy. Uh, and we always do that in our tracks. Then we have some chops here. Together with the synths that they do all this. They follow kind of like a similar melody from the leads. Yeah, we just have this loop for the second part of the drop. Uh, some rides, same rides. And that's pretty much it, guys. I think it's not, it's not, yeah, there's not a lot of stuff. I think the most important stuff for this drop is definitely th all this, like this stuff. Yeah, and that's another stab sample that we used. It's just like very random. You wouldn't expect, expect it to blend well, but it does. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then for the transition, it's just a lot of delay on the vocal chop. Uh, just automation on the vocal chop. What I want to show you guys now is a little bit of the mastering that we've made for this. Uh, every time we start is with the utility. And what we do on this is control a little bit of the dynamics of when we're building the song. And for the most part on the build up, we turn it a little bit down, as you can see here. Uh, to minus 148, which is an estimate. We don't always do the same. Every track is different. And towards this coming more into the drop, it goes lower, lower, lower. Why is this? So you can create a cool effect when the drop hits, it hits even harder than it actually is. Uh, also, we play with the width of the, of the whole master song. We start at 100, which is the normal, and then we drop it. So everything feels like it's kind of like consolidating in a way, like all together. It com it's coming into like the middle and then it spreads out. Uh, it's also to obtain the same uh, effect. Then we have an EQ, which is making uh, everything below 122 mono, which you could do it in a lot of different ways. It's just the way we have it. Multiband dynamics, which just brings a little bit of uh, highs and, and and lows into the track. It, it brightens it brightens some of the of uh, frequencies. Uh, OTT, it's just like a very subtle OTT, but it makes a lot of difference. Then we have a an EQ8 that's also filtering while on the buildup. It's it's like eating up all the low frequencies, so it builds even more tension. Then a loop compressor that uh, let's see, I don't know why this is automated. 
Uh, and also a little bit of boost on the highs on just the basic EQ8. Glue compressor just to like make it a little bit more compressed uh, and bring up some, some more uh, volume on the track as well. Uh, Endless Smile, love this plugin. It's actually for the build-ups. Uh, it builds a lot of intensity. You guys might, uh, might have seen this plugin. Maybe you're familiar with it. Um, and it just creates really cool uh, sort of like sweep effects and stuff like that. Then a stereo imager. We have it op wide open uh, to 137%. Sausage Fattener, which is amazing on the master. I highly recommend using it. Look at that difference. It's amazing. And it doesn't even have anything. It's just like thrown in there. It also works as a limiter. Also, uh, what is very cool, it's this invisible limiter. Uh, it's just set up. Uh, the output gain is minus 0.1, and the input gain is only 45 dB, just to like bring up that very last thing. So that's the master, and that's pretty much it. I feel like the most important thing before you do you start on the master. Uh, is controlling the dynamics of your song like well first mixing of course start mixing like maybe leveling a little bit of everything but this the utility thing is really useful guys i i highly recommend you doing that and as you can see towards it's all over the track like it's towards the start to the, the ending to like everything so that way you can you really have a lot of control and not only do it in the master do it as well on the other buses like on your leads as i was saying previously like they won't stay on the same level all the time you really need to control those whenever you feel like they they need to be controlled don't be afraid of of doing that that that's how everyone does it that's the way it, sh it needs to be done uh in a way, because there's no rules or anything, uh, but I recommend doing that. I feel like that's the that's pretty much it. Then on the only thing I'm I'm uh, missing, I think it's on the second part of the drop. On the second drop, I'm sorry, we have yeah, we have. So I bounce these kicks here, which is the kick, and just did that, boom, boom. Just change the rhythm, and that's pretty much the only difference uh, from the first drop than the second drop. So guys, once again, I think this is pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys learned something. I really do. Um, I love, I love doing this. Uh, and please, if anything wasn't clear, if anything, uh, there's anything else that you think I didn't cover that I might have forgotten, which I don't think so. But please feel free to ask, comment, or just send us messages with questions, and we'll be more than happy to answer them all. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in once again, and. Subscribe, like, comment, and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care, guys. Thank you so much. See you soon.